Now, as differences over the operation in Libya stack up among NATO members, today's meeting of its foreign ministers in Berlin promises to be a fiery one. The UK and France have been pushing other allies to increase the military pressure on Colonel Gaddafi. Now, ahead of the meeting, a specially formed contact group on Libya called for Gaddafi to step down and let the people determine their own future. Meanwhile, the US is training anti-government activists from the Middle East and North Africa on how to spread democracy with the help of technology. But as RT's Gaine Chichikan reports, there could be a hidden agenda. The U.S. is providing high-tech help with innovations for anti-government activists in a number of countries throughout the world. One of the latest developments is the panic button. According to the State Department, the application can be uploaded on activist cell phones. Should they be detained, the software instantly erases the contact book in their phones and sends a warning alert signal to other activists. Sounds great. One push of a button and it's all gone. Probably among those thanking the U.S. government for the technology are going to be drug dealers and terrorists. But American officials, of course, claim the best of intentions, saying the innovation is to protect pro-democracy forces in other countries. To help use the technologies more effectively, the U.S. has organized training sessions for thousands of activists. The one held just weeks ago in the Middle East included anti-government campaigners from Tunisia, Egypt, Syria and Lebanon. And as the newly trained and equipped activists return home, the U.S., as one State Department official put it, counts on the ripple effect. Foreign interference doesn't have to be a military invasion, a bombing campaign, or you know some kind of special operation on the ground in that country. It can also be the training and funding and this political support given to individuals who then promote those foreign interests. And that's one of the newer strategies that the U.S. government has successfully been executing in different countries around the world that it doesn't consider subordinate to their agenda. And it's a way to do it subtly. Uh, it's, it, it's harder to detect it. It's harder to denounce it. And it can often be more effective. The U.S. perceives the internet and social networking platforms as major tools for spreading democracy and pumps millions of dollars into developing systems to help people in the Middle East and China get around internet blocking firewalls. But at the same time, American companies provide Bahrain, Saudi Arabia and Kuwait with the technology to effectively block websites. When the U.S. government purports to be spreading democracy, it's simply a sham, it's a pretense, it's a lie. The goal of U.S. foreign policy is to put its people in public office in foreign countries. The U.S. military has recently launched an online management program which enables it to generate multiple fake identities on social networks. The false personas are designed to contribute to the flow of conversations on Facebook, Twitter and other websites. People are using social media for cyber warfare. I mean, and that's what we're going to see more, more and more of, I think. From, from whether it's governments or non-state actors, they're going to try to find ways to use the internet and social media to gain an advantage in their own battle. The recent turmoil in Libya suggests orchestration of Twitter with fake users. Only around 5% of Libyans have access to the internet and the number of Twitter users there is so small that analysts couldn't even calculate it. Yet, in February this year, a surge of Libyan Twitter accounts appeared, reporting in English and virtually all begging for intervention. We know that in, in, um, since the beginning of the war that Libyans no longer have access to the Internet, but uh, somehow people don't check uh, this uh, essential fact and they take all this information coming from social media at face value, which then serves the broader purpose of fabricating the news. Trained activists provided with panic buttons and other technologies, scores of false identities on the internet spreading certain ideas. The U.S. says it's all about promoting democracy. But do these declared intentions justify direct interference in other countries' domestic affairs? I'm going to check out reporting from Washington, RT.